So here we go with little Ted. He was with us a good few years ago now. I don't know how old he is. He must be 10, I suppose, something like that. Um, so six years ago, I broke him. But then with COVID and a few other bits and pieces, he, um, he's not been driven. So they just sent him back just to put him through his paces. But one thing they did say is that he objected a little bit to the shaft being on his thigh. So I've got this stick here with a yellow end on it so I can show you. Can you see? See here? Right there. Now if you look this side, it's got much more. That's not because he's not running square. We've purposely done that by adjusting the shafts. It's not a thing I would recommend anybody does, but it's a way of sorting the problem. Any horse will accept anything, you know, if he understands what's required, yeah? Um, and you're kind in doing it. When I say kind in doing it, obviously you've got to have... It's like the children, I know I keep saying the same, you bring children up. Children are most happy being inside, you know, uh, there's a boundary they mustn't cross and they live inside that boundary and everything's fine. Now the boundary's up to people, you know, how they define that boundary. So some children wouldn't be allowed to do this or that, but basically horses much the same, um, ponies are much the same, they feel safe happy and calm. We take them out of their world and bring them into ours and there's very little pleasure that I can see for the horse in leaving their world, which is, well, their, their true world, is letting graze from here to Scotland, isn't it? Um, and the only thing that stops them are natural barriers. You know, like a deep forest, a, a, you know, a ravine, a river. Um, stuff like that where they just cannot get across the desert so that's their world so we bring them out into our world and ask them to do we've been doing this for a long long time and people say that oh yeah the horses are domesticated now well you want to be careful when you say that certainly they're domesticated but they still retain after all these thousands of years their natural, their natural way of life. So, if you've got horses in a field and they're laid down, there'll always be one or two standing up on guard. And if those one or two move quickly, trot away, um, you know, do anything, the rest will get up and follow it. They ain't got a bloody clue why, but they'll do it. You know, and that's herd instinct, and that's a natural thing. So, it's very hard to say that. They retain, a, a, you know, a lot of their... Steady, baby, thank you. I just want to slow up here. For the school children coming, you know, there'll be people turning into the school, taking the children to school. So he's a dear little chap. He's lovely. He has been a bit of a problem. Um, and I don't... Well, I think I do know why. And that is what I'm trying to say, possibly, and I don't want to get into, you know, an argument with anybody or anything like that, that's not what I'm about, I'm only interested in uh, if the horse is happy going to work, yeah, and doing what we ask it to do, you know, and they should, they're entitled to be happy, definitely, they're entitled to feel safe, and through those two things, they get their confidence. Still my darling baby. So what I've done is I'm concerned about this, you know, getting this correct, so it no longer, stand still, bro. no longer, come on, in, objects to um, to the shelves. So I'm going to show you when I get down this other road here. Um, oh, baby, that's it. <laughs> come on. Come on, baby. Here you come. 
that school bus there, we passed that quite a lot of times. And um, it does make a funny noise, a bit like a, a clicking noise, quite a loud clicking noise. I don't know if you, it'll pick it up on the audio, but it's, quite, it's different to any other thing that parks there, put it that way. And they certainly notice it, the horse. He's going to go, what's that then? Yeah. I mean, they can see it's a bus. I mean, other buses pull up there as well, I think. Okay, so we talk about this shaft now, basically what we've done. So we've altered the shaft in such a manner that this one is closer to the body than this one, this side. As I say, that side there, you've got maybe two inches. This side here, you've probably got eight or nine. Around that, anyway. So I'm going to turn around here. Come around my baby boy. Yes, you are. Now come around here, darling. I didn't know whether it goes straight on then or... <laughs> or turn around here. He's been both ways. So what we're going to do now... Is we get down this long stretch of road. There's a nice lay-by here. Well, not a lay-by, but a little bit... Where the fishermen go in to, you know, to fish the river there. So what I want to do is we bring him over here, just to this white line. Yep. Oh, my baby. And I'm going to turn him round, round here, right? So that side there, can you see that side there? He's got a lot more room to move his hip onto his offside. Can you see? A lot more room, isn't he? Yeah? That's it, lovely. He's a good little baby boy. Stand still. So this is going to be different now. So we add our eight or nine inches here. Yep. Now we've got two to three where he's standing at the moment. So obviously when we turn him this side, the contact with the shaft will be a lot quicker on the turn. As soon as he starts turning, the contact on the shaft will be greater. Yeah? So as I say, and I'll get him to come round tight. Come round, baby boy. Come round tight. Can you see? You can see him laying on it. Can you see? Now you can say to me, well, why have we done that? Well, you can see his body, instead of being upright and turning like this, it's laid over. And he's laying right on it. He didn't on the other side. So the purpose of this is when I ask him to cross his feet over, so what I'm going to do is to apply a brake to the front here. Come round, darling baby. Come round. Come on. It's only, it's only on, it's not on hard, it's just a, yeah. Can you see him coming round, look? Now, this side now, we know he will tolerate. So we can alter the shelves back again. Well, we, we'll alter the shelves opposite next time we go out. This time will be this side of the horse, the near side of the pony will develop and get him used to it. The other thing is we've put this type of shaft on, on this, we've got obviously lots of different ones that fit, but if you come round darling baby, come round my little boy, come round darling. So if you look there, you can see on the end, the shaft sticks forward. Yeah, you can see there, that's it, I'll just move his head for you. So when I turn him, I can't let him take a bite of grass. I'd love to let him really, but he can't do that because it's a dangerous thing. You know, when they're at work, they're at work. So, so I'll turn him like that, and he, you see that's in his neck. Do you see what I mean? That's pushing him into his neck. You can't see for his mane, but I'll show you on this other one as we come around. Come on, my baby, you good boy. Come on, my darling baby boy. Come on, come over there. That's it, lovely. And you say to me, or a lot of people would say to me, oh, Mr. Hook, or Baz, you shouldn't be doing that on the public highway. Let me tell you something. I, I could see up this road and back behind. We can also look down the road. It's a T-junction at the top. And we can look down and see if anything's coming. This, I want to do this on the public highway. Because here, if it goes wrong in an arena setting, or he objects to it, then that's fine. If it goes wrong 
you're getting used to doing it in the rain, or, I mean, and you on the public highway he does it, then you're in serious trouble because he's going to kick him back and try and get yourself out the shelves. You see what I mean? So if we look at this side now, if we look at this side now, you can see that shelf, look, right in his neck. Can you see it? Look, seriously, push him into his neck. Can you see? Into the top of his shoulder there. Come round my baby boy. Come round, darling boy. Yes, you are. Come on, my boy. Come round. Come round. That's it. Come back a bit. Come back a little bit. He's a good boy. Now come round. Now, you say to me, well, the poor little fella slipping. I'm doing this to show you for the benefit of anybody who's got a problem with with this. And I'm trying to show you that a horse will tolerate anything. I don't want to push this darling little baby in his neck, do I? Of course I don't want to do that. It's the last thing I want to do. But I've got to say to him, Look, mate, if, if this push you in your neck, I'm here, don't worry. It'll be okay. You know, you can cope with it. It's not pushing him in the neck so it's it painful as such, but he can certainly feel it there. So that's what we're trying to do. So you can see now, he'll come over this way. He's got loads of room to move. Look, if I just stand, baby. Oh, he's touching that side there. So you can see the angle he is. Steps on it. Good boy. So he's standing there like that. So by showing you that, that is now pushing on his shoulder, but he's not objecting at all, is he? Just the top of his shoulder onto his neck, yeah? So it's, it's resting on there. Yeah, I think that's a good way of putting it. It's resting. I'm just going to get down and show you now. The, the trouble is with this shit, he's got so much mane you can't see much. So even when I pull it round more, you can see that Ree can still get her hand down behind the shaft. Yeah? Stand still, my little baby child. That's a good boy. So you can see now, hopefully, what I'm trying to do. I am going to say this now to you, and I seriously mean this. People say don't try this at home. I'm definitely saying don't try this at home. Yeah? It takes, you know, quite a bit of experience to know how to cope with that. But for horses that find it, when you turn, they object to it being on their hip. Yeah? You've got to remember, even with a round-ended shaft, which is much better than these, but even with one of those, you've got a situation where it's still applying pressure. And the problem is, when they get their hip on one side and they turn, right, you're pulling their neck on the other side. But if they object into the hip, they will... You've got to pull them round a little more. You've got to apply a bit more pressure to turn them, which is then applying it on the neck, Yeah. So it's when you're doing near on, on the near side, you're doing the offside this side. The offside hip is affected, or you're affecting the neck the other end, even with round shelves, you know, looped end shelves as they call them. A looped end shaft, you know, they, they're, they're all different, they're different styles and types of them. So, you know, but I'm, as a general rule. But a little pony standing there quite happy. Walk, baby. And you go away at a little walk there like that. Such a nice little fella he is. The other thing I've found that he's tried to do with me 20 times, I would think. Um, oh, Ree's just saying 18 times. <laughs> Ree keeps account of these sort of things, which is obviously great, because when we discuss things and the progress of things, it, he can tell me it's been 20 times, it's done that 10 times, you know, remember when he done this. And also we can go back and refer to the films we got, which helps us to sort things out and get it right. 
So you can see him running there with one shaft off and one shaft on. Yeah. Oh, I've been closer to his hip. So tomorrow we'll change it over and do the other side. We're also out quite early. This is the third uh, horse we've done. Trot, baby. Good boy. Yes, you are, you young rascal. Yes, you are. So it's far better in this particular instance for me to do this with this horse here. We're out. Without sounding big headed or anything, I mean, we know what we're doing, we're doing it a long time. And when he goes back home, if he's in a, a vehicle that's got fairly tight shelves, because a Shetland, you've got to think, can be quite wide, they've got to be tall, is it? But you see some Shetlands that be really wide, you know, like as wide as a 13 2, some I've seen a standard Shetland, you know, so you've got to be. And the shelves have got to fit. Say to me, what size do I want the shelves to be? Well, I like them an inch off the pad each side. So the inside of the tug that you're sitting the shaft in, about an inch off the pad each side, you know. The back of it is, I, I would always say, like you want six inches either side. Um, is a good, you know, six to five, five to six inches on a pony this side either side. Yeah. So, what we'll do, we'll, we'll check tomorrow with the shelves the other way around um, when we take him out. But this this trip that we're doing is going to be um, half an hour, three quarters. So that's enough time to, to practice what we've done um, a good few times and make sure there's no objection and my dear little mate out the front here is doing all the work's happy with it <laughs> basically <laughs> they're in total to be happy aren't they of course they are happy going along she's skipping along there he don't mind what we've done he's accepted it he's happy that's that's good but we've got to put him in that position in case when he's at home he had they had a different reaction um so that's it lovely We'll talk about his other little problem next time we make the film. <laughs> Come on, my little baby boy. You young rascal. What are you doing then? Go on, boy. On you go. <laughs> <laughs>